Sean Dewey once said, education is a social process. Education is growth. Education is not a preparation for life. Education is life itself. John Dewey grew up in the small town of Burlington, Vermont. His parents were both raised on farms, but decided that they wanted a different lifestyle for Dewey and his siblings. His father became a local grocer when Dewey was young, while his mother focused much of her time on volunteering with less fortunate families. He delivered newspapers and worked in a lumber yard for a few years as part-time jobs. John Dewey attended public school in Burlington, but he showed very little interest in his schooling and the way his subjects were taught. He found it more enjoyable to stay at home and do chores because it was something that he could apply and use later on in life. He became frustrated that his instructors controlled what they learned and how they were going to learn it. It is this frustration that helped to lay the groundwork of John Dewey's work as an educational philosopher. In his book, The School and Society, he writes, From the standpoint of the child, the great waste in the school comes from his inability to utilize the experiences he gets outside of the school in any complete and free way within the school itself. This is an idea by Dewey that has influenced education in a large way. If children are learning concepts in a way they can apply them in everyday life, they are going to be more likely to use them. They are also more likely to be engaged, remember, and use those basics as a stepping stone for confidence in further learning in any particular subject. Also, if children are learning skills outside of school that can be applied with subjects in the school, they will be more confident in their academic performance. A good example of this is learning math. Having a kitchen area in your classroom and teaching children how to bake a cake, for example, can help them learn their math skills easily and give them the tools to apply it at home. When making a cake, you need to be able to measure out the amount of ingredients you need. You may need to convert measurements add ingredients, measure baking time, and deal with fractions. When a student realizes they can use something they learned in school or at home, such as baking a cake, in the real world, they will be more willing and excited to learn about such subjects as math. This is a belief John Dewey has and a message he spread throughout his career. John Dewey also led the progressive education movement. This movement had two important concepts, respect for diversity and the development of critical, socially engaged intelligence. This progressive movement is not to be confused with the Progressive Education Association, which Dewey refused to be a part of in 1919 because he believed the association was nowhere near being progressive. He did, however, accept the presidency of the association in 1928 and use that platform to speak his beliefs. His belief, as written in Selections of Dewey on Education, states that we should be able to do the following. Have respect for individual capacities, interests, and experience, enough external freedom and informality at least to enable the teachers to become acquainted with children as they really are, respect for self-initiated and self-conducting learning, respect for activities such as the stimulus center of learning, and perhaps above all, belief in social contact, communication, and cooperation upon a normal human plane. Albert Bandura is a theorist that relates to Dewey's belief on social interaction and learning. Dewey believes that it, that it is important for students to have the opportunity to be social and learn from other children. Albert Bandura's attention, retention, reproduction, and motivation model can show how students can learn from one another. Bandura believes that first the student must be attentive to the subject. You must be able to remember what you have learned, reproduce that behavior, and you must be motivated either by past reinforcement, promise reinforcement, or vicarious reinforcements to continue this behavior. Bandura's famous Bobo doll experiment were experiments in which children are shown an adult modeling hitting the doll. When left alone with it, the children repeated the behavior. This social interaction is what Dewey believes is important for children. When children are using manners, for example, at snack time, other children can pick up on those cues and will retain, reproduce, and be motivated to use those in the future. That is why Dewey believes socialization is so important, because children can not only learn important school subjects, but also social norms. John Dewey said, Since learning is something that the pupil has to do himself and for himself, the initiative lies with the learner. The teacher is a guide and director. He steers the boat, but the energy that propels it must come from those who are learning.
Do we believe there needs to be a certain balance between the teacher as a guide and the student as a learner? It is easy for any child to learn about something that they can be actively involved in or have an interest in. If children are experiencing these things hands-on and in a way they can explore, they will more easily retain the information and be able to apply it in life. He believes in the theory of experience. You first need to understand how the students have experiences that they do and then teach to that. There needs to be continuity and interaction. Continuity means that every person is sensitive to every experience, whether they gain a positive or negative knowledge. Interaction is when past experiences that a person has interacted with the present situation, which helps create the person's present experience. For example, if children learn early on that biology is fun to learn about, then in the future the subject will be easier to learn retain and the child will be more open to learning about it. John Dewey's career as an educational philosopher started at the University of Vermont when he graduated second in his class at the age of 19. He excelled in the sciences but his main interest was in psychology and philosophy. Dewey knew he wanted to be involved in education somehow but he wasn't sure exactly how it would fit in. His cousin offered him a job as a high school teacher and he took it and taught there for four years. Dewey has also published many essays and books since receiving his doctorate at Johns Hopkins University. He also went on to teach at the University of Michigan. He has even lectured around the world, everywhere from Turkey, Mexico, Japan, China, and even though he was heavily criticized for it, even in the Soviet Union. John Dewey's amazing philosophy, role in the progressive education movement, and role as an educator earned him a spot on the Time Magazine's 100 Most Important Americans of the 20th Century. John Dewey was not only one of the most important Americans in the 20th century, he was one of the most important influences on early childhood education today as well. Dewey encouraged children to be exactly what they are, children. Through their play and social interactions, he believed they could develop to their full potential. Dewey also believed it was important to keep the child at the center of the school. Like what was mentioned earlier, instructors and educators were the main focus of school in Dewey's childhood. As an educational philosopher and leader of the progressive education movement, he pushed for the more child-centered schooling that you see today across the country. As you go on in your life as future educators, parents, and adults, keep Dewey's ideals in mind. As a teacher, be a guide for a child's learning instead of an instructor. Encourage your children and students to be active learners. Treat your school as a community. Let kids be kids. Let them socialize, explore, and learn. It is more important to develop the moral judgment of a child than have them memorize the knowledge. Help your child and student learn through experience and apply school subjects to the world. Again, in the words of John Dewey, a wonderful man you have learned all about today, who has helped shape our schools and education communities. Education is a social process. Education is growth. Education is not a preparation for life. Education is life itself.